Hello everyone. So if you've been watching Sun Says for any amount of time, you know that I don't just like talking about clinical research, which has been my life for the past 20 years, or marketing, uh, but I'm really into mentorship and personal and professional development. So today we're going to talk about loneliness and that it's supposed to be a epidemic that's coming up for our health and longevity, that there is research showing that it could be as bad for ourselves if it's chronic, as bad for our health and longevity as obesity. I have not read the research to know if that's true, but I actually don't think it matters if it's true in this case. What I want to do is briefly touch on five ways that you can help decrease loneliness in yourself and others, because um, maybe it doesn't affect you, but you know it affects other people, or you just want to do a a mitzvah for the world and you don't you don't want other people to feel bad. Chronic loneliness is just straight up painful, horrible, and so we don't want people to feel that way. At least I don't. So that's what this video is for. Um, of course, we're all going to have acute bouts of loneliness. We are humans and we have the full breadth of human experience, highs and lows at all the time. You cannot always be on an even keel, so that's fine. Chronic loneliness. I'm going to think about the ways to combat this as concentric circles. From the outside, the people furthest away from us down to the inside. But I'm going to gloss over three of them, okay? Because the, I've videotaped this a few times and my videos are way too long. So I'm trying to shorten it. Okay, so the furthest out is micro. This is a place where I think you have huge capability to improve your lives and other people's lives more than any of the others. And that is because these seemingly meaningless connections we have with people who we don't actually know give us doses of oxytocin. They make us happy, they make the other person happy on a biological level, even if momentarily. But it's not so momentary because it has been shown that these little micro connections with people have even can even help a severely depressed person feel better. That's amazing. So when you are walking by someone, as long as you feel safe, but a lot of us live in places that are very safe, fortunately, that you walk by someone, you say hello and make eye contact and give a genuine smile. This is important. It's the eye contact alone that is doing oxytocin. It's not a downward, hey, that's not doing it for anybody, not you or them. So try to find ways to be not transactional. You're at the grocery store or you're talking to a retail clerk, you're making eye contact. Perhaps you have words of affirmation. I love your name, you know, because you're seeing your name badge or that's a great color on you. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. And you're not trying to fake it, it has to be real. But anyway, make eye contact, don't live a transactional life. Other humans are other humans. They're not just there to be passerbys in the, in the big scheme of the world. Of course, we always will have passerbys. I've, I've been in cities where you're walking by 100 people at a time. You're not making eye contact with all of them. Then let's go, the next one is collective. This is like a bigger group of people um, who maybe you have something in common with, like you work with them, but you're not really friends. Then you come to relational where you are kind of friends, but you really see them at parties mostly, or you connect with them on text every couple weeks. It, you're in group chats together, whatever it is, a uh, sewing circle. And then you come into your intimate people who are like three to five people, and you're really, really close with them. I think we've heard about these three groups. The core one though, where I think you can make a difference in your life is um, self. Because one of the things I noticed when I was, uh, one of my externships in clinical psychology was working in a university psychology center. So you had a lot of people who had come to university, it was their first year and they were feeling so detached from the world. They didn't know how to live with other people, they were away from a boyfriend or girlfriend, whatever it was, and they just weren't sure where they fit in. And it wasn't just with them, but with my with people I know now who engage in what's called numbing behaviors. And this is where it's so hard to be alone that the person is scrolling YouTube, scrolling TikTok, scrolling Facebook, watching 
TV hours on end, not just a movie, but like TV hours on end, um, doing drugs, including alcohol, whatever it is, as a matter of course, not recreationally. I'm just saying like, it's what they do when they're alone. And the what this means is, it's kind of like the transactional thing we we're talking about. You're having a transaction with yourself. Like you're not even making eye contact with yourself because you're instead engaging in some other behavior. So you're busy, you're preoccupied, but you're not creating a relationship with yourself. And I don't have the advice on how to have you create a relationship with yourself, but if you could just think about now that you have a visual, your spectrum of, do I have a relationship with myself? Do I have three to five intimate friends? Do I have a relationship of some sort that's semi-close with like 15 people? Do I have other groups I could be in? Am I making contact with the world as a whole even if I don't know the people? This, somewhere in here is a place or many places, five places perhaps, to combat loneliness if you have chronic loneliness or if you know someone who has it. What is it that they need? At the very least, I'm gonna say, please go out, be in the world in a way where you make eye contact and add just a little spark of joy to someone's life and your own through not being a transaction, but a moment, a brief moment of connection. Hope you have an amazing day. Bye.